Hi everyone. So I want to continue here talking about the um, wave nature of particles. And um, remember, in the previous video, we talked about uh, De Broly and his theory that uh, all particle actually also has they also have wavelengths, and you can calculate the wavelength if you take Planck's constant divided by the mass of the particle times its velocity. And we did an example to calculate the wavelength of two different objects with different sizes, a, a particle uh, that's fairly large, a baseball, and then a very small particle, an electron. And we find that in the calculation that the wavelength of a macroscopic particle like the baseball is just so small that it's not something that we can measure. Um, and it's so small compared to the size of the particle itself that um, it doesn't make sense to talk about the wave nature of something like a, a baseball. However, when you get to um, a particle that's very small, like the electron, we find that the wavelength is actually much larger than the size of the particle itself. And as a result, this makes it that the wave um, properties of the electron becomes quite um, uh, observable or becomes quite apparent. So in the next several slides I'm just going to show you the experimental proof for this. Now one of the things that people know <clears throat> about wave of course is that if if this electron if the electron is a can behave like a wave uh, in other words it has a wavelength that should also mean that we would be able to uh, make it do things that a wave can do for example diffraction okay now you remember that in the introduction to this chapter to this topic topic 7 when i talked about properties of wave one of the properties i talked about is the diffraction property and the reason i talked about that is because now it's going to come back and uh be useful to us because we're going to talk about diffraction again so just as a quick reminder that diffraction is this property of light where if you were to shine light on a um, structure that has two slits like this, for example, each light, remember, is uh, light goes in as a wave, and so these waves, they can interfere with each other, either constructively or destructively, and as a result, in parts of the, so here you have a film or a detector that basically um, captures the, the light that hits the detector, and uh, in parts of the detector where there's um, destructive interference, then you see no light. In other words, it's a black color, just a film. Uh, in the parts where the light has uh, full interference or constructive interference, then you see a bright pattern of light. So then you get these alternating pattern of uh, black and bright, you know, bright lines, which is light, and then no lines, which is uh, darkness. And that's um, as a result of this, uh, you know, constructive and destructive interference. Now, as I mentioned in that video as well, in the introduction video, uh, another thing that um, you can do instead of using these slits, you can also use a crystal, which is a three-dimensional arrangement of atoms and molecules. So, for example, if I were to put a salt crystal, uh, like sodium chloride, I made a crystal out of it, and I shine x-rays on that crystal, the x-ray will then be diffracted the same way and then you get a diffraction pattern and from that diffraction pattern you can then figure out what the structure of the x-ray would be. So in fact to prove the, Broly theory, the Broly's theory that the electron has a particular wavelength, um, there's two uh, different scientists who worked on this, two different, I should say, two different teams of scientists the first team was a team of uh, Davison and Germer, um, and Davison is here and Germer is here. They work actually uh, at the time at the Bell Labs, uh, which became AT&T and now became uh, Alcatel-Lucent. Uh, they, uh, at the time, were scientists working at Bell Labs, and what they propose is that if the electron is, is in, in fact a wave, in other words, it can behave like a wave, then the electron should uh, be able to diffract and so the theory is always that if you want to diffract something you want to find um, a crystal 
uh, that basically has uh, in the atoms of the crystal the distances between the atoms is approximately about the same as the wavelength of that beam uh, of light that's hitting the crystal so remember that early, uh, in the previous video we made a very quick calculation of the uh, wavelength of an electron it was some some you know a value around in the UV region so in fact what they did was they picked nickel crystal which has a distance that's about the same as the wavelength of a of an electron and what they want to know is will you see a diffraction pattern here because if electrons are particles then you don't expect to see a diffraction pattern however if electrons are waves then you'd be able to see a diffraction pattern and of course uh, I wouldn't be talking about this if the experiment didn't actually show a diffraction pattern so in fact you saw electron diffraction or they saw electron diffraction and that proved that electrons have a wavelength right in other words it has uh, it behaves like a wave because only wave like objects can diffract and therefore that proved de Broglie's hypothesis um, and th this is the actual diffraction it looks like a ring here as you can see it's a ring of dark and bright uh, spots and again the dark spots is basically the part where there is um, destructive interference of that that light that electron beam and then the light spots here the bright spots are the spots where there is uh, full or constructive interference of the electron beam uh, so Davison and Germer was the first uh, team of scientists to work on um, the electron diffraction. A second scientist who worked on um, electron diffraction was George Th uh, Thompson and he basically did pretty much the same experiment except that he used gold foil as the object that diffracted the electron and he found this pattern which is again as you can see here's a here's the film and in this case the film is actually white so the dark pattern is actually the electron beam so you can see that again but it's similar the the concept is similar you know the white part of this is basically the part where there is uh, destructive interference and then the black part is the part where there is constructive interference and again he saw a diffraction pattern and that can only mean that the electron is a wave or has wave-like properties uh, Thompson and uh, Davison which is the other scientist from the other team shared the Nobel Prize in 1937 for this uh, experiment that showed that electron is a wave okay just as a, on the side Thompson uh, George Thompson is actually the son of JJ Thompson if you remember we talked about JJ Thompson back in uh, topic 2 when we talked about the discovery of the electron JJ uh, Thompson was the person who worked with the cathode ray to um, uh, determine that the ray consists of these particles called electrons so it's a little ironic that the father uh, discovered the electron and discovered a new particle called the electrons and then the son showed that the electron is not a particle but it's a wave so it's kind of interesting how how those things work but they both got the Nobel Prize for uh, their respective discoveries now the ability of uh, electron to diffract the uh, you know the the ability of electron to behave like a wave is not only uh, important in, in terms of quantum mechanics but it has practical application as well and one of the most important application is in the uh, uh, design of microscope that utilizes electron as the light uh, that is being shined on the object so a normal microscope or the microscope that you might have uh, used in your biology lab uh, in high school or even in college usually it's a light microscope in other words there is a uh, visible light is what you uh, shine on the object in order to you know magnify it and uh, I wrote down a little bit here at the bottom the concept of looking at something in detail something that's very small in this case in detail is what we refer to as trying to uh, resolve or uh, resolve or, or uh, you know uh, basically separate the objects into a higher and higher level of detail this is referred to if you want to see something at very high level of detail then you want to see it in high resolution uh, this is probably a term that you've, you've kind of heard before as well but 
high resolution means you can see something uh, that's very uh, small in very very high detail okay very very um, specific details now in order to see something in high resolution you have to have light that is about the same wavelength as the size of the object this is sort of the same idea earlier with the diffraction as well um, if I want to be able to diffract uh, for example uh, the nickel crystal I have to um, and in other words being able to see the nickel crystal I have to have um, a light that has a wavelength that's about the distance of the nickel crystal so the same thing here in the, the concept of the microscope if I want to see something in detail and that thing is really small then my uh, the light that I shine on that that object has to have about the same uh, wavelength as the size of the object itself now light you know visible light microscopy of course uh, depends on the is, is dependent on the wavelength of the visible light which is in the range of let's say 500 nanometers okay um, and so as a result when you use visible light you can resolve objects that has a size of about 500 nanometers but there's a lot of things that are smaller than that smaller than 500 nan nanometers uh, using the electron as a beam as your light source you're then able to resolve these objects in much higher resolution because the wavelength of an electron is about you know 12 picometers or so and this is of course a lot more um, you know a lot uh, uh, shorter in comparison to the visible light so as a result you can see things in more detail this is a picture of the same object the same microorganism being looked at under a light microscope versus an electron microscope and you can see how much more detail you get uh, by looking at this same object under the scanning electron microscope compared to the light microscope okay here you can just see the overall shape of this but you can't really tell that there's other features but here you can really see the fine features of this microorganism so uh, there's a, a very important application uh, in terms of the wave be, uh, property of the electron and I just want to mention that to you in case you decide to go to biology and you'll encounter one of these uh, very fancy high uh, resolution microscopes